Hello, my name is Alina Dima and I'm a senior developer advocate in the AWS IoT service team. Welcome to the video about enriching payloads with MQTT5 metadata via the AWS IoT rules engine. In this video, we will look at building a vehicle command log store to keep track of MQTT command requests and responses sent to vehicles from app clients. For this purpose, we would look at how you can extract MQTT5 metadata information from your messages, which are published with MQTT v5, and enrich the payloads via an IoT rule. We are going to store the process data in a DynamoDB table. The goal is to use as little custom code on the cloud side as possible, so we are leaning heavily on native integrations on the cloud side, like the IoT rule to DynamoDB integration. Additionally, in this video, we are going to be exploring a feature of MQTT5 called the request response pattern. The request response messaging pattern is a method to track responses to client requests in an asynchronous manner. It is a mechanism implemented in MQTT v5 to allow the publisher to specify a topic for the response to be sent on for a particular request. When the subscriber receives the request, it also receives the topic to send the response on. This pattern additionally supports a correlation data field that allows tracking of packages. Let's take a look at the following example. Let's assume that we want to send commands to vehicles over MQTT from client applications. The flow is as follows. Vehicles subscribe to request topics and client applications subscribe to their decided response topics, which can be dependent on the application instance ID, for example. App clients publish requests on the request topic. In our case, the payload would be a simple uh, text saying, for example, door lock, indicating the command to lock the vehicle's doors. As you can see from the diagram, following the MQTT5 request response pattern, in addition to the payload, you will be sending metadata such as the response topic and correlation data, a request ID, a timestamp for the request, and the user ID. This data will help us pair MQTT requests and their responses. As the device receives the MQTT message, it will execute the command and publish the response on the specified topic. Upon publishing, it will resend the correlation data, but it will also append response-specific information, such as a response timestamp and the command it is responding to, marked red on the diagram. The app instance will receive this information and on the response topic it subscribed previously. This is the flow that we are looking at, also specified in the diagram. So now let's have a look at the steps that we need to perform. So remember that we're building a vehicle command log using Amazon DynamoDB. So the goal is to see all the command requests and the command responses eventually added to DynamoDB. The first thing that we're going to do is start the two MQTT clients, which are going to be simulating. One of them is going to be simulating the client app and the other one is going to be simulating the car. The next step is going to be to look at the IoT rule that parses the data as well as the MQTT5 metadata. And then we're going to be looking at the action that saves this data into Amazon DynamoDB. So let's run the two simulators. We're going to start with the car simulator. So we see that as the car simulator is starting on connected, it also subscribes uh, to the topic that it needs to receive the request on. Now let's start the app. We see also that the app, the first step uh, it performs is subscribing to the response topic. Now, of course, the reason why this is waiting a little bit is because I have implemented uh, a few um, timeouts here, uh, but we see already that the app has published the command uh, and the command has been door lock. And at the same time, it receives the message door, lo door lock success uh, from the car simulator. On the other hand, the car simulator has received the message to, uh, with, a, with a door lock command. Uh, it parsed the message, it executed it, and then it published door lock success onto the, onto the response topic specified in the request message. Uh, now, of course, our simulator is sending every 10 seconds a command request, um, and so the device, the car executes the command request and sends the response. Now, the reason we are doing this is so that we can have more data uh, to show later, to look at later, as we are looking through um, the Amazon DynamoDB table.
So the next step is to actually uh, build our IoT rule. Uh, as you can see on this diagram, uh, the IoT rule is, is basically um, picking up messages from two MQTT topics, right? So it is looking at both the request topic and at the response topic. Because we want to log all the messages, uh, the request and response messages, so the requests from the app client uh, and the responses from uh, the car simulator, this is why we need to, uh, to basically make sure that we are selecting data from both MQTT topics. The rule is configured with a DynamoDB action, but of course, what we need to do is uh, build a JSON object that contains all our correlation data. And because the correlation data is encoding, uh, encoded in a base64 encoded string, we need to decode it and extract the properties out of it one by one. So this is the reason why we have the request ID separately, the request, the request timestamp, the command, the response timestamp, the user ID, and the response topic. Uh, of course, in the case that uh, the message is a request message, we are not going to have the response timestamp, and we are also not going to have the command. Um, right. We are also adding a message ID as a new unique identifier. And this is going to be, you will see later, but this is going to be our primary key in the DynamoDB table. Uh, of course, we want to also pass uh, the actual message payload, uh, which is sent in text, as you remember. And so therefore, we have to, uh, to make sure that we are encoding it in a base64 encoded string. And then afterwards, we are decoding it uh, so that we can get out a string. Uh, again, the, the, the selection is happening from both MQTT topics. You can see here from the, the from uh, and the MQTT topic specified. And also, we want to make sure that we are doing this only for um, the messages that have the content type property set to text plain. Uh, so we don't want to do this for the telemetry data, which is sent in JSON format. Uh, one thing to specify here is the get MQTT properties is a rule, rules engine uh, SQL function that uh, allows you to extract metadata from uh, MQTT5 uh, payload meta, met, metadata properties. So if we look in the AWS uh, IoT console, so by, uh, by basically scrolling uh, into message routing and uh, rules, uh, we can actually see here our, uh, our newly created IoT rule, uh, which is exactly the SQL statement that we have seen uh, on, on the slides. So as an action, the first thing is to republish the data because we would like to actually look at the, uh, at the, at the created enriched payload. And then the other action is, uh, of course, to, uh, to store the data in uh, DynamoDB. So if we go in the, um, in the edit mode, so uh, basically in the edit view, we can actually see a little bit better uh, the SQL statement, which is here, uh, but also the rule actions. So uh, the republish is happening on a topic called parse. Uh, and and then also the DynamoDB, uh, you know, the DynamoDB action publishing the data to a table called car command log. If we actually uh, go and navigate to the uh, MQTT test client and we subscribe to two topics, one of them is the parse topic that we have seen earlier, and uh, the other topic uh, is is going to be uh, well, we need to spell it correctly. Um, so we need to subscribe to parse, not parse. Uh, and the other topic would be uh, basically containing containing everything, all the messages. We can already see how uh, our payload actually looks like. Uh, so this is this is the enriched message that we have constructed, uh, which arrives on the parse topic, right? So in the case that it is the the response, we have door door lock success, and we also have the request and the response timestamp. Um, and in the case that it is the command itself. Uh, then we have the, the response topic present. So this is how uh, the enriched payload looks like. So everything good so far. So once we navigate to uh, the DynamoDB, uh, you know, to the DynamoDB table, we can uh, find the table called car command log. Uh, we can already see that the partition key is, so the primary key is going to be the message ID. Um, if we, we have not set a sort key, which is correct. And, um, in here we can, uh, we can actually explore, uh, the items. Um, 
so uh, of course you can see this is exactly what i was specifying earlier so if it is the the actual response we also store the the, the command name uh, for the request command right so let's have a look for example at this item so we see that the message id which is the string this is the new uuid then we have the command we, then we have the data that comes mostly uh, as correlation data including request id request timestamp response timestamp uh, and of course here this is the name is is basically uh, uh, what comes from the actual payload so this is the text of the payload right so this gives us um you know a bit of a of a log of course it is um you know it is possible to add uh, more information uh to to, to this database uh, so to the database entries based based on the request uh but yeah this is basically how you can build a dynamo db log database from your messages so in this video uh, we actually looked at how to leverage the MQTT5 request response pattern and how to use AWS IoT Core and the AWS IoT Rules Engine to enrich the messages and create a DynamoDB vehicle command request log. Uh, we have been using the native rules integration, which means that we did not write any custom code in order to uh, write the uh, messages and the enriched messages to the DynamoDB table. Uh, we have also seen how to leverage IoT rules MQTT5 SQL functions, like the MQTT get property by property name. And this is how we retrieve the correlation data and the response topic. Uh, in terms of references, feel free to, to have a look at the MQTT5 documentation from OSS and uh, also the MQTT5 SQL functions provided by the AWS IoT Rules Engine. Thank you very much for your attention. My name is Alina Dima and I'm a Senior Developer Advocate uh, for AWS IoT. Feel free to connect with me by scanning uh, the QR code that you can see on the screen.